First question is, how much time are you spending versus how much time are you investing? And what's your return on investment? I was um, about six years old when my mother dropped a bombshell. She said, Daniel, I've got something to tell you. When you were born, a relative opened up a bank account and put some money in there as an investment, as a seed, so to speak, a savings account for you. And I'm like, really? She goes, yeah, and there's $5 in there. <laughs> I was about five or six years old. That's cool. And in 1979 when I was born. Five dollars was a lot of money. It was still a lot of money when I was six. So I did what all good six-year-olds would do and say, I want it. I want to spend it. And I was like, you sure? I'm like, I'm sure, Mum. I really am. So she goes, okay. So she pulled fiver out of a purse and gave it to me and I assume she emptied my account later on. But I'm holding a five-dollar note thinking, wow, this has been sitting ready for me since I was born. And I went out and I bought a little bendy rubber kangaroo. And I got home and half an hour later I had the most intense buyer's regret. I had blown my life savings on a bendy rubber can, uh, kangaroo. I was devastated. I, I'm sure that you're aware of the, you've experienced before the feelings of regret that you have. Buyer's regret. It's a terrible thing I'd wasted. So much money. But then when I turned seven, guess what happened? Someone gave me ten dollars. Like, wow, <laughs> not that bad after all. In my seventh year, I spent my first night at a friend's house. I had my first sleepover with my friend from school. His name was Noah. And uh, it was a toss-up. I wasn't too sure what to do because my dad had been away for a whole week, which was Unusual for Dad, so I wasn't used to my dad being away. Me and my Dad had a pretty close attachment, and he was getting home that night. It was a Friday night, and I had the option of staying home because Dad was coming home or going to my friend's house. I chose to go to my friend's house. I'm like, yeah, it'd be cool. I'll see Dad in the morning, no problem. Well, things were cool until I got to the point where it was bedtime and all the lights went out, and the uncomfortable environment, the culture of the household that I wasn't used to, and my friend had gone to sleep, it all hit me, and suddenly I had decision regret again. I cried. I bawled like a baby. The thing, that, the thing that had sunk in was the fact that my dad got home tonight, and when I see him tomorrow, he would have already have gotten home. And I knew that when he walked through the door, one of the first things he would have said is, where's Daniel? He had gifts. He had stories to tell. He had films to develop. Remember when he used to do that? And he'd show me the photos of the fish that he caught. I was truly devastated by the decision I made. And, and the thing that struck me was that I can't live that day again. Dad can come home again, but it'll be a different trip and a different day. I got $10 again, but I'll never get that night again. And I've gotten over it now. But it taught me to make some right decisions about what I do with my time. I'm talking to you about time. This candle represents your life. Who knows that when the candle gets to the bottom and there's no more wax and no more wick, it's game over. I grew up and became an uh, apprentice carpenter, swinging one of these for about seven years. And uh, one of the first things my boss said to me, he goes, come on, Daniel. It was morning tea. Come on, Daniel. Time is money. Get to work. Time is money. Now, from my childhood, I'd learned a few things. I'm not saying that I knew everything, but this is one thing I understood. Is that the first person to ever say time is money has grossly underestimated the value of time. How can time, something you can never get back, be equated with money? That if you lose it, you can just get more. Time is not money. It's so much more valuable than money. As a matter of fact, money is a lot like this hammer. 
Speaking of carpentry, if I was to pour a concrete slab and, and uh, for, a, for, a, for an owner who wanted a house, then I took my hammer and I put it in the middle of the concrete slab. I put it right there. And I said to the owner, I'm a carpenter. Here's your concrete slab. There's my hammer. <laughs> he's going to look at me firstly like, what are you on? And then he's going to say, where's my house? I say, house? No, no, no. Hammer. I'm a carpenter. Now, of course, you'll think that's lunacy. So the solution to the problem is, of course, to go and get another hammer or maybe a saw. And I'll put all of my tools on the slab and say, what do you reckon? When can I get paid, mate? It's, it's, it's silly. I know we, we understand it's silly. But how many lives do you see that are lived constantly surrounding themselves with tools and never building a house? You see, I put to you this. If, come the end of your time, and all you have is money, I say you've made a dud investment. I say the only way to get a positive return on investment is to spend, invest your time on something that is truly timeless. <laughs> Because things that are timeless is positive return on time. Thank you. This has been another Metamorphic production.